if you're going to have the fundamentalist state of Iran come in with a different nexus with Syria uh, and try and stop any movement forward and threaten nuclear war, you are heading towards a crisis of a very different making that you, you must have immediate solutions for that, that will put a roadblock on, on any type of hope. But we're, we're an organization, Blacks and Jews in Conversation, of hope. So I'm never going to put a damper and say, there's no hope, Paul. Uh, we believe in hope. Jews believe in hope. Lenny and I, I'm sure we both believe in however down we might get at different times with corruption, with all different things, we hold out for hope. Could you um, uh, take a moment now and plug your show? <laughs> My show. Yeah, yeah, plug your show. Tell, tell thank us, you, Paul. You gave us a, a great t a opportunity at 7 o'clock to be on Shannon Taylor's show, The Conversation, Blacks and Jews in Conversation. When can people see that show? At 7 o'clock on this station, uh, uh, 56, and uh, every, MNN. Every Tuesday, right? Every Tuesday. We usually do it live. Occasionally it's, uh, it's taped, but usually it's live. And uh, n next week I have a, uh, a renowned singer, a cabaret singer for, for many years. And then uh, uh, we have political figures and, and authors as, as distinguished as, as Mr. Brenner. And, uh, and we're uh, going to do another joint show on the 24th. On the 24th we John have Markle. an estate uh, an appraisal expert and uh, how to save your money and your wealth such as it is. <laughs> What's left of it. All right, so let me, uh, let's continue on now with the discussion between uh, Shannon Taylor and Lenny Brenner. Lenny Brenner is a great author. He's uh, written many books. So let me give you a moment, Lenny, before you uh, respond to plug your books and to tell people what you've been up to. Okay. Uh, lechery and fetchery, jiving and conniving. That's what I'm up to. Right? Okay. But uh, listen, uh, I quote a lot of stuff in my uh, material, you know, like here, here now. So if you folks want to get the full translations of these articles, etc., Write me at BrennerL21 at AOL.com. That's right. BrennerL21 at AOL.com. And that's two N, so it's B R E N N E R L 21 at AOL.com. Okay. Right. Now, I want to get to, uh, you said, listen, a great number of arrows were driven out of the country in uh, 48, etc. This is a letter to the editor to the New York Times on December 4th, 1948, signed by Albert Einstein and Hannah Arendt and Sidney Hook and about 35 other Jews about Menachem Begin. It's called New Party, uh, Palestine Party Visit of Menachem Begin and Aims of Political Movement Discussed. And they're talking about his uh, Irgun, okay, all right? A shocking example of their behavior in the Arab village of Deir Yassin. On April 9, the New York Times, they're, they're quoted, he's quoted, their, the letter is quoted in the New York Times, terrorist bands attacked this peaceful village, which was not a military objective in the fighting, killed most of the inhabitants, 240 men, women, and children, and kept a few of them alive to parade as captives through the streets of Jerusalem. Okay? And then they invited foreign correspondents to come and look at the heaps of dead bodies because they wanted to scare the Arabs of the Irgunas come and get the hell out of here. That was their whole strategy. Now, uh, look, Benito Mussolini said to the chief rabbi of uh, uh, Rome, the guy who really understands what Zionism needs is your fascist Jabotinsky. Right? And this is Albert Einstein talking about the, how uh, the Begin's party, which is the precursor of the Likud and Kadima and Yisrael Betenu, okay? A political party closely akin in its organization, methods, poli and political philosophy and social appeal to the Nazi and fascist parties. Now, look, if you want to, when Mussolini says you're a fascist, you can argue with it. When Einstein says you're a fascist, you can argue with it. But when Mussolini and Einstein say you're a fascist, stick the hand up and sing Giovanazzi and do the thing and don't be lying and deceiving anybody, okay? Look, I mean, I don't make up these documents. I wish I could make up documents in Italian, you know? <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, and in Russian and German 
etc. I mean, this is all scholarly stuff, and this is the history of uh, Zionism. Now, if you want to tell me about the terrible history of the Arabs, my attitude is that uh, as far as uh, politics comes, the average Israeli has a nit sized brain, unlike the average Palestinian who has a nat sized brain. All right? And uh, when it comes to religion, uh, the great bulk of both of them believe in a great ham hater in the sky. Okay? <laughs> now, I happen to love wine and swine, you know? So, I mean, I'm not fond of religions that tell me that pork okay, comes from am. the devil, you know? <laughs> and that there's a god up there who hates pork. I mean, what does he know, God? Come on. I mean, do, do you like pork? Yes or no? What about you? I believe in God, and I don't eat pork, and I respect both the Muslims and the Jews who won't eat the pork, and dear, you see, never happened. It was as fictional then as, as was Einstein being anything of sympathetic to Judaism. Einstein never knew from religion. He admitted he never knew from religion, and he never uh, followed any facts outside of science. Einstein was a scientist, and that's all he was. And he, uh, forever, Einstein, to speak outside of his uh, particular methodology, it would be for me to talk Talk about ham. <laughs> <laughs> and I think All right, right, not ham right, questions. That, that's great. We brought, <laughs> we brought the whole issue right down to the heart of the matter. Wine and swine. <laughs> wine is, wine swine. is a different matter. Yeah. I'll go. Yeah. Wine, right. Paul, where's the wine? <laughs> now, but uh, still we have the, the issue about democracy because in a sense I think that this probably makes both of you guys uncomfortable because the issue of democracy in the Middle East, how can Israel, is, is it, is, do we want a democracy in the Middle East or do we want a socialist revolution? Well, are you talking about Israel? Yeah, or Israel. Or, or any of those countries, was the go, uh, sort of, if you have a socialist revolution. Because the election's been difficult is, right. in Israel. Is it, is it, but is it truly democratic to have a Jewish state? I'll take and that right democracy, up. democracy, number one. And number two, from the other perspective, is what a democratic state ever going to bring together uh, uh, folks uh, in the socialist point of view. I'll take that right on. Uh, as a student of Rabbi Meir Kahana, he was the first to, uh, to broach this issue. You cannot have, in his opinion, you cannot have a democratic Jewish state. It's a contradiction in terms. Uh, however, it was a, 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 a Ben-Gurion put together a combination of elements and he forged like any country. They forged a whole bunch of things. They gave concessions to the religious, concessions to the non-religious, concessions to this group and to that group, and they put it all together. And by God, the, the law itself of Israel is Turkish and English and American and Jewish and Arabic and, and everything. So they called it a Jewish state, and they called it a democracy, and it was a democracy. Because, but the one problem you have is if there are enough people who are not Jews can't that group of people who are not Jews vote out a Jewish existence for the state. And so you've been dependent on migrations. You've been dependent on Soviet Jews. And the argument is that there will always be enough migrations to make sure there's essential Jewish character. And my argument is no. You cannot depend on that. You must maintain it as a Jewish state no matter what. Okay, we don't have much time, so I'm going to go to our... Uh to our Lenny Brenner, our other guest, who's going to take the other point of view, I imagine? Or? Look, the most important thing for Americans to know is that they don't know about the Middle East and that they have to start doing serious research, okay? Uh, because I wish I could make up uh, these crimes on, uh, by, by Israelis, by Arabs, etc. I Except that I'm not making them up, okay? And uh, the, the plain fact of the matter is, though, that we in the United States, uh, I, I grew up at a time, I was born at a time when lynching blacks was a common event, okay? And today we have a black president, okay? And uh, we all know the experience of uh, South Africa, okay? Which, uh, whatever its problems, and there's many, uh, the fact of the matter is there are hundreds of thousands of uh, whites living there Okay, and they're going to probably be there until they intermarry and disappear, you know, etc. So, uh, yes, you can have equality and peace, but it has to be on the basis of the absolute equality of Palestinians and Jews in Palestine. Uh, one, one state, two nations, 
Thank you very much, Lenny Brenner, and thank you very much, Shannon Taylor, Joe Moosey, I'm Paul DiRienzo.